Welcome to the Lazy Geeks Network. Welcome, everybody, to the Cheap Seats Podcast here on the Lazy Geeks Network. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. And this is the podcast where we sit and talk about movies, particular movies, movies that interest us or just seem like something fun to watch. Unless you've listened to podcast number six, which was The Core, which was nobody had a good time in that entire movie at all. Uh, <laughs> so this is the <laughs> second season premiere of The Cheap Seats. And this month we are talking about Batman, The Killing Joke. So, um, yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what yeah, we're talking that's about. That's pretty much so, what we're talking uh, about. I, 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 I was, yeah, I know. I, I was going to go somewhere with that. And then I was just like, I, yeah, don't know. Don't know where to go. Um, so, uh, for the, when we came, when we took our break in September, uh, we started talking about what we would do for the, the remainder of, of the year in regards to the cheap seats because sometimes we kind of you know we looked for something to pick and then other times it was like oh that'll be a cool thing so um so this month where we've gone with the killing joke and we've actually picked the next two for the remainder of the year so now we got to start thinking about 2017 and what the hell we're going to bring you guys then so for this month obviously batman the killing joke next month is going to be the 1986 classic animation animated movie, The Transformers, the movie. Uh, personal favorite of mine and dark as fuck. Uh, that movie is shit. Let's <laughs> <laughs> be a dick. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, that movie is like insanely dark and traumatized every kid that watched it when they went to the theaters. As it should. Right. And then another one that traumatized every Star Wars fan for December because it is Christmas and when uh, I was listening to some of the other shows that we had during the uh, Summer Rewind I actually listened and I was like oh yeah we spoke about the Star Wars Holiday Special and that we should do that um, as a Cheap Seats and I think we mentioned doing it last year but we ended up pushing the Cheap Seats to January of 2016 instead of uh, when we were going to launch it in um and our season premiere on the 2015. So we are going to do it this holiday season for you. So this December will be Star Wars, the holiday special. And uh, you can kind of, I think you can still see it on YouTube. Like Lucas did an amazing job in trying to bury that fucker. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You can probably pick up bootlegs um, at the uh, convention circuit because I picked one there. And it's a shit copy. I mean, it was like transferred from like a very horrible VHS or Betamax like copy it was one of those kind of things uh, but you can actually see last I saw there was the full version on YouTube so check it out if you want to want to have a good time at Christmas when we talk about that because you know fuck the Charlie Brown Christmas special we're talking about Star Wars the yeah special. that's how we do yeah. it <laughs> I've never seen it too yeah so Adam's gonna be oh if you thought uh, you thought the core was bad Wait till you see this. And I think the core was great. <laughs> and at the same time, I think it's kind of appropriate because at the same time, Rogue One comes out in December. So, knowing me, I'll probably fucking fall in love with it. Be like, <laughs> oh my god, this is you. You guys just don't get it. It's <laughs> such a jam. <laughs> it's a touching story of Chewbacca and his home planet. <laughs> yeah, you know that doesn't sound bad in itself <laughs> yeah on but paper, it also sounds like something that could be done bad <laughs> very easily yeah on paper it sounds it sounds like oh that might be a cool idea then you go ahead and you actually see it and you're like oh wow that that totally sucked <laughs> yeah so we're recording this on wednesday for release on friday 
So which means we probably won't be talking about the uh, the uh, Logan, the Wolverine 3 trailer until our podcast on Monday, uh, the Lazy Geeks podcast. Uh, but for right now, we are going to be talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 teaser. Yes. Uh, that was... I was really kind of like... I forgot it was actually coming out today. Like, all of a sudden, I saw online on... Because uh, at yeah, work... Yeah, I forgot, too. When at work, you know, when I'm bored, I, I peruse through Facebook. And uh, all of a sudden, it was just like, Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy. I was like, what? So, I thought it was just a still... Because they showed the image, that black and... I don't know if you saw that black and white picture of all of them leaning against the wall. Yeah. And... Uh, that was a cool little image. That dude. was, too. It was like, everybody's and, all looking kind of might badass. miss you might miss that little fucking baby Groot on the floor <laughs> dude I was like oh shit I know you miss him kind of uh, right by Quill's uh, boot and I actually did miss it because I was lo- obviously looking at everybody there trying to catch an eye on that uh, Karen Gillan um, but uh, then all of a sudden I, I follow uh, James Gunn on um, on Instagram and um, all of a sudden he cropped it he's like in case you missed it in the big picture and then um, I looked at I was like going, oh shit I didn't see baby Groot so that was pretty badass. Um, trailer looks cool. I, I mean, all it is is just image, which is cool. And um, I like the fact that they're calling it Volume Two, not like Guardians of the Galaxy Two or whatever. Yeah. You know. Um, so that that was actually pretty cool. And then that last shot of of uh, uh, Rocket blowing a hole through that piece of metal, and then you see Baby Groot's head come out from behind Rocket with that little like red leather jacket or something. I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Uh, and then, of course, how can you argue with a with a Drax Quill hug, you know? I mean, I would say, yeah. <laughs> hug me, Seth. <laughs> that was good. Do you want a hug? No, I'm, I'm okay. Here you go. Oh, I thought I said I didn't want a hug. <laughs> <laughs> um, you need to find a woman who's pathetic like you. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> thanks buddy <laughs> I, I like how he just sits there looking at him just like alright I know you didn't realize what you just said but alright <laughs> uh, but uh, it's true it's, no, <laughs> <laughs> I mean still what cracks me up watching the uh, the first movie is when uh, you know he brings in uh, Gamora from space and then they're like having that moment where in that, they're in that dock bay and then he tries to still tries to go in for the kiss you know Oh, man. I, will, I will admit, um, I was watching the trailer, and that first brief moment where Gamora kind of passes the camera. Oh, right. I, I went, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, whoops. Also, today we got um, a teaser for the, uh, for the teaser trailer, which is funny. Now we're getting teasers for teaser trailers uh, for... Logan, or as some of people like to know, Old Man Logan, since that's going to be the third Wolverine movie, which is Hugh Jackman's final foray as a Wolverine. And uh, he looks pretty yeah, beat. Just like all the other ones that he said were the final foray. Right, right. Come on. So we'll see how we'll see how this. Well, I know that's what I said to. Him. I was like, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, but uh, he looks pretty pretty ba- banged up in this in that black and white still. But of course it's black and white, so of course. You know, we'll have to see how it looks. But I've I've seen some other pictures that he's taken with the makeup on, and you're like, oh, he looks like he's he's had some hard living, you know. So, he looks <laughs> I love that meme though, the picture where it had uh, Wolverine's hand and that little looked like a little kid's hand holding his with the claws, and then yeah. uh, then uh, Ryan Reynolds got a hold of that and was like, that's really me and uh, Wolverine, and then he shows a picture of him <laughs> with that baby hand. <laughs> I saw that. I love that. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny because it's almost like you feel like they they couldn't be allowed to do that. And Ryan Reynolds just basically told everybody, "Fuck you, yeah. do whatever I want." <laughs> he he's the embodiment of Deadpool at this particular point. Like my movie makes more money, so I'm <laughs> right. gonna do whatever I want. Yeah, everybody didn't think I was gonna make that much money, and I did. So fuck all of you. He just fucking he constantly walks around raining money on bitches. Just whoop, 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 whoop. It's like oh shit. He goes up to, he goes up to uh, his wife and just starts throwing cash at her. 
Uh, you can't treat Blake Lively like that. That's a lady. <laughs> I, I actually, you know what? I watched her um, recent movie, the Shack movie. Oh right, the Shallows. Yeah, I, I think the Shallows. Called. I think it's the Shallows. Yeah, the Shallows. Yeah, and I, I didn't think I was gonna let like my my friend basically. I watched it with a homie, and, and he's basically like, "Well, he came over, right. and he <laughs> my friend." Yeah, because you don't go anywhere. Because you don't go anywhere. I don't. I don't. <laughs> My, my friend Adam's a saint, so he buys he buys every new release movie, like most of them. If it's an off the wall, he's not going to buy it. But he buys all the major releases because he he likes collecting Blu-rays. Mm-hmm. So he always gets the digital version. So he gave me his login to his Voodoo. Oh right, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I ain't buying shit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we were watching it, and I'm like, he 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 told me it was like it's Blake Lively in a bikini. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but for like not 10 for minutes, fucking but, two hours. Right. You know what I mean? Like, at that point, I'm just wondering if she's cold or, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> the parent comes out. So I watched it. Was, it was pretty good. It had some tense moments in it and shit. Kind of forgot she could act. Because <laughs> she's not in much. No, and it's funny with and The her, last thing like, I remember her from is fucking Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, though, because she does act a bit. But the thing is, is that she'll either do something kind of marketable and then like some off the wall kind of indie shit, you know? Yeah, she does whatever the hell she wants. Yeah. And that's fine. You know what I mean? If she if she has the resources to not have to do the paycheck movies, by all means. Well, at you this know particular I mean? point, Ryan Reynolds has got it. <laughs> you know, she got money too. You know, that's not trip, but he obviously got more. Yeah. Because well, he's a man. No, <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag <'Cause> Trump's America. <laughs> Trump's America. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing, though, is that, you know, like, and, and let's be honest. I mean, Ryan Reynolds hadn't been doing a whole lot. Like, a lot of his movies had been kind of bombing. So this, no, when they, this when was they met in Green, When they met in Green Lantern, wasn't she the bigger star, technically? Technically, yeah. And uh, But, you know, for him, I mean, Green Lantern bombed, and, and a lot of his other movies weren't doing as hot. So this was kind of like, okay, you know, he's he's going to need something. Otherwise, he's, you know, not going to be getting, you know, those kind of roles anymore. And, yeah, so he knocked that one out of the park. So looks like he saved himself for another day. I think, I think the one thing in the studios and his agent were doing wrong with Ryan Reynolds is they kept trying to put him in heartthrob movies. Mm. And, like, yeah, he's a handsome man, but he's funny. Right, right. Like the, his biggest thing is comedic timing. So put him in some funny shit. Don't he isn't just supposed to smolder in front of a camera. Although <laughs> his uh, his Amityville Horror, I thought he did a damn good job in that. He creeped the shit out of me, <laughs> and that's difficult because I'm usually just rolling my eyes at horror. I was like, this motherfucker's the real deal. <laughs> like I don't even know if I can see him in the street at this point. Right, right. Uh, so, um. <laughs> well, it's funny because he even, you know, pokes that pokes fun at himself in De- Deadpool. He's like, do you think Ryan Reynolds got anywhere on his great acting ability? <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> oh, man. He can do, but he can do serious shit, too. He can. Like, I think he is a good actor. When he started out, he was kind of mediocre. Yeah. But I think now he's good. You know what I mean? Like, and now with Deadpool, he's pretty much cemented himself as the, the high player. Oh, like, yeah. he probably gets scripts all fucking day. Yeah. And now, now, you know. Yeah, exactly. And now it's uh, now it's time to bring in that Deadpool money. <laughs> <laughs> he could just keep doing Deadpool movies. He'd never have to work again. Pretty much, yeah. He's going to go to directing now. Watch. <laughs> I want to direct a Deadpool movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, dude. Then, comic then, book. then he'll, he'll break the fourth wall while breaking the fourth wall and then break the fourth wall as the director. Deadpool writing a Deadpool movie while also playing Deadpool in the Deadpool movie that Deadpool wrote. Right. <laughs> my head's starting to hurt just thinking about it <laughs> oh man so uh this the choice we started to kick off uh the new season of uh the cheap seats with the killing joke or batman the killing joke was we had we had talked about it when it was when it had come out uh during the summer and we had t- thought about doing it for the show. But then I, I made the recommendation of why don't we just wait until October when we come back? Because by that point, everybody would have seen it, you know, or at least anybody that was going to see it would have seen it. Because yeah. we kind of want I kind of wanted, uh, wanted us to be able to talk about it without 
oh, well, we don't want to give the spoilers, even though most people should have read the fucking graphic novel at this point. Um, and if you haven't, you're fucking up at life is really what it is. Um, <laughs> but uh, we wanted to make sure that, you know, everybody had it a It gets to, to a point it. that if you haven't seen a movie by a certain point, you just don't care. Right, right. Like, you're not going to see it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that's why we chose to start off uh, season two with uh, Batman the Killing Joke. Because I think when we were, it had, we only had a couple of, I think one show left before um, before the season break. And I was like, oh, it's August. I think it came out, what, in late, Jul- mid-July? So it was only going to be like a couple of weeks since it had been out. So I thought, well, we'll do it when we come back. So at least then there's a couple of months in between. So then by that point, everybody would have seen it, seen it there and formed their own opinion, good or bad or whatever. So uh, with that, I think uh, we'll just jump into a little bit of some background on this movie. So after recording Batman Arkham Knight, actor Mark Hamill had stated due to the strain on his vocal cords, he would never do Joker again unless it was the killing joke. Although since then, he and Kevin Conroy have agreed to reprise their roles for the upcoming Cartoon Network series Justice League Action. Basically, he's staying lying. This motherfucker is <laughs> lying. He, that's what happens when that's what happens when a Jedi goes off by himself. He starts, you know, thinking things from a certain point of view, and then realizes, yep. you know, hey, it's money. <laughs> I'm gonna do me, motherfucker. Exactly. No, I, I mean, I think he really loves that character too. Yeah, I think that's kind of the thing. Well, I mean, you know, most of the time, I mean, every time he does an appearance, he always, at least for the most part, always does a joker monologue yeah you know for the fans because every he knows the fans love him as the joker which is kind of cool because you know for a while you know it was like oh he's only going to be known for luke skywalker what have you but you know now it's like he's also known as the joker as the joker you know so i think that's kind of cool um so i'll do the next one motherfucker i wasn't sure if Um, if we because we hadn't actually discussed beforehand of like are we going to alternate so listen listen (laughs) it's already known all right (laughs) (laughs) the 30 minute prologue seemed a bit weird according to producer tim bruce they had to add original content to expand the film as the source material was too short for a feature length film yeah it was kind of weird as in not necessary (laughs) it doesn't matter that that it was too short i wouldn't even give a fuck Put some put some fucking um behind the scenes shit in that or in that fucking shit or something. Or, or even if you're gonna do that, I mean, even if like, I mean, we'll get to it when we get to it. But you know, I you know what? I'll save that comment for when we get into it because I have. No, we gonna talk about this shit right now. Because <laughs> then we're gonna deviate, and then we're gonna have an hour into it, and we just still on the background. <laughs> uh, Look at this bullshit. <laughs> Originally slated as a direct-to-video release, The Killing Joke was given a two-night theatrical release, which made it the only second animated DC film to ever hit theaters, the other being Batman Masks of the Phantasm. That was a good movie. I had it. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm playing with my microphone. Are you, sure you're, are you sure you're playing with your microphone? Are you? Well... <laughs> Listen, what my microphone is, I'm not never gonna tell. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, a nod to both Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger is given in the scene where Batman is reaching the Joker on his computer, researching. Um, researching sorry, <laughs> uh, with images of their portrayal as the villain from their respective 1989 and 2008 movies. I just noticed this the second time I watched it, and I only noticed the Heath Ledger one. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought not- that was dope. I noticed it the first time, but I actually only noticed the Nicholson one. <laughs> <laughs> you notice what you know, I guess. Exactly, I know. exactly. You know. Um, a live-action version of the movie was originally going to go, was going into production in 2009, but was canceled after Watchmen's failed to perform well at the box office. Fuck that. That would have been dope, I dude. know. I know, right? But, and know, Watchmen was a dope movie, too. Just people didn't get it. Well, yeah, and I think it was too... I think for most people, it was too obscure. It was, And it was too comic book. Yeah, like it was... It, it didn't it, flow like a movie. It flowed like a comic book. Yeah. Which, so it made it seem disjointed which in is, a lot of places. Which is funny as shit, because when you think about it... And, you know, most people complain about Watchmen. Um, you want a movie that's a perfect adaptation of the comic? There you go. That's why yep. you can't do a comic book movie 
straight out as a comic book. You fucking asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's amazing. Like people s- always go, "Well, it wasn't like that in the comic, really." Watchmen was exactly the comic, and you guys hated that one. Oh right? my god, most of that movie, most of a Watchmen was panel for fucking panel. Especially dude. that opening with the the killing of the comedian, like it's exactly like the comic. Of course, it, it is. It, you know, ex- of course, the ending. You know, the way the the yeah. movie ended, but you know. I mean, you have to worry about the budget somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Is it my turn yes. still? I, oh, I thought you were on it. Fuck you. All right. <laughs> the filmmaker said that the only Fuck way to... You. <laughs> you got something to say? Fuck you. Shut the fuck up. All right. <laughs> we have There's some no problems. <laughs> You know, I hope you get a baseball because you're about to catch these hands. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the filmmakers <laughs> said that the only way to adapt uh, Batman the Killing Joke graphic novel was to make it R rated rather than the typical PG 13 rating. This also marked the first DC animated film to be rated R. I fully agree with that choice too because it would it would it wouldn't have been um, faithful. If they right. put it to PG thirteen, but at the same time, shooting abroad and all types of shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. but at the same token, we might have eased up a little bit on uh, Batgirl in that beginning, <laughs> you know. That's true. <laughs> so like, you gotta... we can't do the Batman. We can't do the Batgirl beginning. Oh, because of the PG thirteen. No, because it fucking sucks. That's why. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, and Mark Hamill admitted at a Q and A at Star Wars Celebration in London, which happened a couple months ago that he wasn't satisfied with the outcome of The Killing Joke and stated he would have preferred to have completed the story as an audiobook, not a full cartoon feature. I mean, that's his choice, you know. Yeah. I mean... I, f- I, f- I think an audiobook would be dope, too. I wish they'd make one of those. Dude. I actually it, listened to one recently. Mm-hmm. It was just done by some fans. It was kind of like a podcast format. They did an audiobook of um, Hush, I think it was. Uh, Batman Hush, is and it, it was this, dope, dude. They they had everyone acting out the fucking characters and shit. It was like the nineteen twenties, like kind of radio drama style. Is that the same one that last year they did the Long Halloween? I'm thinking it's Long Halloween. It was it the Long Halloween? Okay, that was the one. So yeah. good though. That was. I, I listened, I listened, to, it listened to that at, whole uh, thing. Work. Yeah, yeah. When and you I told me about to it, it at work, and I wasn't paying attention to <laughs> shit about my work, dude. <laughs> yeah, because last year you mentioned it to me when uh, I was like going, "Oh, really?" So I downloaded the first couple of episodes and then at the time at where i was working um i i didn't have to deal with the phones and stuff like that so i was just pretty much just doing my work and i was actually listening yeah i found myself like slowly stopping and listening (laughs) to that thing but uh yeah i just like it too because they throw sound effects into it it's it's not like an audio audio book's kind of bore me yeah it's just one dude the whole time unless it's patrick stewart (coughs) well that's different yeah you know auditory yeah. masturbation at that point really oh my god <laughs> <laughs> by the way that song you clipped to me was whack the what that friggin star trek mix song that you sent me <laughs> it's probably best to be talking about off the podcast but i'm just saying it was kind of whack it was funny but it was whack <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right so i guess it's time we uh dip into this to this movie Batman the killing joke so uh. one of the couple we're changing we changed the if you heard the other sh- one of the other shows I can't remember which one it was but we kind of changed the format of this one we're not going to do like we did for the the away team where we're going to kind of go beat by beat um, this we're going to kind of pretty much just talk about the stuff that we really kind of want to talk about and then just talk about the movie as a whole so you know we're not going to go you know pretty much frame by frame and then and, and dissect the story. Um, and I think a lot of what we have to talk about, mostly criticize, will be that first 30 minutes. Um, yeah. I'm not really sure why they had to use such a young Batgirl. You know, because she seemed more in the age of like she is in the current DC run. Like, right. you know, I mean, because going into the, to the killing joke, I mean... She, they never, I mean, granted, she kind of just showed up and then, you know, boom, she was gone. But was it necessary to have her, like, in college or whatever? You know, I mean, I don't know. It just seemed a little weird because, you know, I was trying to figure out the timeline from when, um, from when, uh, uh, 
from when the prologue ended to when the actual killing joke started i mean some, the only it was it was like only the, like a week or something the only believable part of that whole thing is that batman is capable of getting some college girl ass well yeah i believe that shit. <laughs> you know but i mean i don't think anybody's disputing that at this particular he point. straight pimped her in that he was talking all types of shit <laughs> he tell her shut up do as i say and it's always it's always funny too because like you know she comes riding in thinking like oh i gotta help batman you know take down this truck it's like you know everybody especially her should know when batman doesn't you know batman doesn't work well with others yeah if he didn't call you don't show up right especially when he wants to do it alone yeah it's like come on back and you could tell he was he was saying that too because he was trying to protect her whatever but my my main my main issue and I'll, i'll say this before we even get into it my main issue with this whole beginning bit is that it made Batgirl, it kind of like, we were in the 1970s all of a sudden. Like this this woman who's supposed to be this badass fucking chick. And I mean, read the comic book now. Like she handles business, you know what I mean? Like yeah. she's not just some sex toy. She was just some fucking whiny young college girl who was chasing after a dude. And when she didn't... F- he didn't reciprocate she was like didn't know what to do with herself you know and that kind of shit like man i've seen this story a million times we can leave it in the past it's old yeah you know like she batgirl's cool man i like batgirl and yeah yeah, like this one yeah (laughs) (laughs) i mean you know batgirl was voiced by tara strong who you know for most people is harley quinn you know um or bubbles or yeah or bubbles um but the thing is is that you know so many people bitched and moaned which bothered the fuck out of me when you know the joker anniversary came up so they did that variant cover which was reminiscent of the killing joke it was like they shouldn't have that because they're gonna they're making her as a victim and and it's it's like oh shut the fuck up we're talking about a cover that came out like 30 years ago um or almost 30 years ago but it was like you know everybody was talking about oh how they just used her to just move the plot along i'm sorry it's a fucking comic book there's a lot of characters that have died for just being a plot point. So wh- let's be honest. There, there's a lot of people in everyone's life that are just used to push along your narrative. Yeah. Let's yeah. be, let's be honest. Yeah. You know, they, <laughs> that's like, true. what did Shakespeare say? The world is but a stage yeah, and we are all, all but player. mere players. Yeah, exactly. And, this, and that's the thing is, is like, you know, so, I know that this whole prologue to kind of build the relationship with with her and Batman uh, was actually, I think, did more damage than the Killing Joke did. Or if, yeah. if, if if you look at it, how people look at it, because a lot of people look at it as like she was just used as a plot point. They didn't even really give a shit about her. And I'm like, you know, it it seems a bit weird, you know, um, that we would show that given all of that that we would write a story in 2016 basically making her a bumbling little college girl and that for some reason because of this whole little sexual relationship with her and batman that somehow that makes her more important to batman than it would have before or keeping in the batman realm i have never heard anyone either professional blog podcast personal life ever say that Batman's parents were just used as a plot point. <laughs> and they are. That's all yeah. they are. They're yeah. just a plot point. They're the, the reason why Batman is Batman. Right. But no one ever says that. The only reason people say it about Batgirl is because she's a cute girl. That's yeah. all it is. If that if if it was friggin' Robin that was empowering. just chilling. Like if Robin was just chilling at his house, no costumes, talking with a homie, maybe they're playing some Xbox, whatever. And Joker came in and shot him in the fucking spine. No one would care. Well, that's the thing. It's like you think about Jason Todd. Like people voted for him to be killed off with a crowbar by the Joker. You know, it's like yeah. nobody sits there and goes, "Well, we should rewrite it because that's that's just really nasty. That's just you know that that's bad imagery." It's like nobody gives a shit about Jason Todd. I mean, let's be and honest. That, nobody and gives, that, a, sh- gives that a shit folk, about him now. <laughs> right. That folks is the reason why when political correctness goes wrong exactly is now you now you're just favoring who you feel 
is not being treated fairly. And then it goes way over the fucking top. <laughs> right. You know, like, oh, every every woman, every female character has to be fucking perfect. Men can be shit. Right. Because I've seen plenty of movies where dudes are rapists, dudes are murderer, dudes due to this, due to that. And like what was that movie um Taken? Yeah. Was it Taken? No, not Taken. Enough. A dumb um that dumb song with the Jenny from the Block chick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, um yeah. that movie was all about a dude and, and I it's okay. Some dudes do that, whatever. But no one complains about that. No one's like Oh, it really shouldn't portray men in that light, you know. Blah, blah, no, blah, because blah, blah, it blah. empowers women, you know. To, turn it around, to, to and turn, turn it around, around and make the chick be the one that was beating his ass. Yeah, and and they would fucking freak out. Fuck these bitches, man. <laughs> uh, everyone, I'm not saying women are bitches. It's any bitch that says some stupid shit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so the movie opens with you know uh, Batgirl trying to help out Batman stop this truck by. Who, that's being driven by Paris Franz. Uh, sh- stupid fucking name. Um, he's a weird... It's fu- a stupid villain. It's a, it's it's your the, ki- the kid of a... Or like a younger family member of a mob boss who wants control of everything. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's there's nothing about this story that's original. Like, it, I, I understand. It's like, they say, well, we need to do original content. The story itself is tired. Like, we've yeah. seen this a million times. And... You know, he wanted to take over from his uncle, which didn't have any sort of link to the main story. And one of the, I think, the big problems with this is that there, there is no like. Hey, his it, uncle was used as a plot point, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> he was. Just saying. But what's funny is that there is no like linkage between this and the main story. No. You know, it's like you're watching like a, you're watching a Saturday morning ca- cartoon. Where or like SpongeBob, an episode of SpongeBob, where the first ten minutes is one story, and then the right. next ten minutes is the other story. Right, exactly. And uh, so, should have had the fucking title cards in between. I would have died. <laughs> that would have been awesome, right? What was weird with this is that you know he was just a weird adversary. Like he was all hung up on on Batgirl for no one really like. It seems like they were trying to obscure the fact that he was probably uh, sexually stimulated by her, which, let's be honest, you know. Like, no one blames him for liking <laughs> back. <Batgirl. laughs> right. You know, but it's it's just, it was so instant. Yeah. Like, it wasn't, there was no buildup. As soon as he saw her, that was it. And, like, you he know? does this like, whole thing where he fucking, you know, spoilers, by the way, uh, you know, kills off his his uncle and and these people to take over because didn't his uncle try to kill him? I think first. I think his uncle tried to kill him first by blowing up his. Yeah, boat. he well no yeah he sent he sent people because um Franz or whatever his fucking name is Hans um, and Franz <laughs> stole from his uncle. He stole from his uncle's oh, like right 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 bank or something. And so yeah, so then he goes and. Um, so he has this whole thing going on, but at the same time, he still manages to spare some time to set up this elaborate kind of like get of Batgirl. So, you know, Batman basically tries to convince her that she isn't ready to handle this guy alone. And of course, she isn't listening. And then, of course, she confides in some her like weird gay friend, like she has to have a gay friend. Because that's how it came off to me. I'm not sure if he was actually supposed to be gay, but it it kind of came off that way as the stereotypical, like, oh, she has to have a guy friend, so now it can't be a straight guy that happens to be a friend. It has to be gay. Right. You know? I mean... Yeah, there had to be a token gay guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. In a Batman cartoon. But whatever. Uh <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> First of all, the do- the token gay people in Batman's realm is Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. Get it right. <laughs> right. I mean, so, you know, they have that argument where on top, and I'm not even sure where the fuck the sex portion came in. Like, that was just so fucking random. Like, he basically, he basically said, did you fuck him? But, like, <laughs> out of nowhere. Right. And it was just kind of like, what the hell and like you know we (laughs) we did the moment where she like basically kind of takes him to the ground and you see her easily take off the top of her bat suit which kind of looked more like a sweater 
Yeah. <laughs> when she took it off. So, of course, we get that little quick shot of her and her bra as she dips below the uh, the uh, roof line. But then the gargoyle that's, like, right above with that look of, like, yeah. Hey, now. <laughs> I put in my notes, the gargoyle sees all. <laughs> right. It was just stupid. The whole thing was dumb. Yeah, I mean, and so, I mean, like, we know that The Killing Joke, at least according to Alan Moore and them, was written out of continuity. Like, yeah. It, like, it was it's a, standalone. a standalone. Yeah, it was a standalone, and it wasn't actually supposed to be part of the whole DC realm, but yet it became so because the book itself became so iconic it became part of that and then the whole and then she became oracle but i always assumed that she was older when she became oracle no she was pretty young i mean college because that's kind of where it seems like she was like you know i don't i don't know i guess i don't know if she was in college but she was about that age she wasn't Batgirl. Batgirl wasn't old when she became back i don't mean like old i mean like when she became oracle is what i'm talking about like when she be you know wasn't she a little older than what she was in the movie because it kind of seemed like because in the book itself it doesn't really say like how old she is but i by the way she was presented and the way she was in the in the in the novel i assumed she was older i'm gonna look it up for you right. and it's not gonna tell me right. <laughs> and you know so yeah, and then and the whole sexual sex aspect with it just seemed really weird for me because it just was like to me it just seemed that it was more of a um, you know more of that link of like okay she had the sexual relationship with Batman and then they had the total I'm talking to him but he's not talking back what am I gonna do kind of thing the whole reacting like a girl and then no, I shouldn't say it that way but like a love struck you know teen. Um, right. And then all of a sudden, you know, like a week or two pass and then she gets shot by the Joker and then the, the Batman goes after. It kind of seems that, you know, because they had that, you know, because that sex happened between them. Now Batman gives a shit about her, which, you know, if any fan knows that that's definitely not the case because he cares about everybody. So it says I did look it up and it says, um, Bruce Wayne is roughly 25 to 30 in most renditions. Mm -hmm. Barbara Gordon, by comparison, is 19 to 22. Dick Grayson is 18 to 21. So, you know, Hmm. just saying that she was pretty young. But I think the thing is, is that in earlier comics, she was young, but she wasn't really written young. Right. She was written as like a together human being. Like she wasn't like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. even the way they did it, the, that she was depicted in this differs from the way she's written in the, especially now, even in the new DC. You 100%. know, because 100%. you know she's figuring out because you know she learned a lot from Batman and 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 uh, Nightwing and and everybody else, and so now she's like doing stuff on her own like she she has her shit together so yeah it just seems really weird that that she would be that way and it kind of seemed like she just seemed like a dumb kid you know yeah um but for developing the character especially in the sense of the prologue it would have been better if they did a short involving the joker maybe using the whole you know death of a death in the family storyline without being the actual death in the family storyline so then it would be more of Batman would be more upset because he couldn't protect someone under his guidance as opposed to, oh, I, I fucked her once and, you know, that's why I care. You know, I mean, I just. We can talk about this all day, but really the first 30 minutes of this movie is shit. <laughs> like it, it, it's it's so out of place. I and honestly, the reason why I usually don't get angry when something sucks, like I'm just like, oh, whatever. You know, uh, I would have got angry if Killing Joke sucked, but mm-hmm. this isn't Killing Joke. I'm, I'm talking about the actual Killing Joke that <laughs> happens after this. Um, what pisses me off is that with has how iconic Killing Joke is and how important it is to the fans, and and DC knows this. Why would they put this shit in front of it? 
Yeah. It's almost it's almost disrespectful. Like let, let's let's really be honest here. You know, it's downright like I have to sit through this bullshit before I get to what I actually came to see. Right. And and I think in, in a lot of instances, what would have probably transpired a little better is if maybe they had done some, I don't know, expanding on the original story. Like, maybe we can see a little bit more, maybe add a little more to the actual story as opposed to adding a prologue that really has nothing to do with the main story. Because the, I mean, if we're going to kind of skip past all the, all the, the stuff from the prologue, it, there should only be two chapters on this Blu-ray. One, the prologue, and the second for the rest of the movie. Yep. You know, it, it, that's kind of where, you know, where this lies, basically. I mean, at least for me, I don't, I don't know. Where it lies with me is that they should sell a separate cut of this movie mm -hmm. called the missing the Barbara Gordon shit in the front. <laughs> and then just sell. I just think it's so stupid. Like, and to use the excuse, oh, well, Killing Joke's too short. So we had, shut up. <laughs> Don't act like you, you haven't released something that's short before. Right. No one would have gave a fuck. Like, yeah. seriously, release that shit on, on Blu-ray. Put a lot of extra features on there, a little behind-the-scenes joint. That, that campy shit that all of us love where you're watching them draw shit and you're seeing how they put it <laughs> together. You know, and then, and then it just has... You know the the cut of the the movie, the actual movie. It's like what an hour. Yeah. You know, there you go. That's all you fucking need. Well, I mean, even even so, I mean, even if you're gonna do something, let's say out, you know, that's separate from that, that really has no reason to connect to it. Make a couple of shorts. You know, put the shorts in it. You know, like it's you're gonna release good shit though. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but like you know, I mean, Christ. You have the producer and the actors from the fa the fucking Batman animated series. You're going to tell me you guys couldn't come up with, like, two shorts to put in the beginning of it before you actually got to the killing joke? Or even find another short trade, you know, out of, out of continuity story and put them together. Yeah. Not this shit. Because what it seems like to me is like, okay, we have this fucking um, killing joke. It's dope. Everybody wants to see it. We have this Barbara Gordon thing that someone has, and we're never going to be able to sell it by itself. <laughs> so we might as well throw it in here. Like they had someone at DC had to have known that sucked. Yeah, and that was completely just out of fucking place. And you know what? Out of fucking line. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It made it made the only thing that little beginning cut did is make Batman look like a super pimp. <laughs> like he was dismissing the shit out of her like look well, I ain't got time for this well even like even at the end when she just starts randomly beating the shit out of him out of the uh, the Franz guy you know where she just like completely going to town and then just abruptly quits um it's kind of like okay like and you, like Batman is just kind of standing there like you know like like he, he like in really, when you think about this story, like, it's supposed to play a Barbara. Like, it's even, what is it, Barbara's uh, voiceover through the whole, through that whole bit. And, you know, Batman, I mean, Joker's not even in the first 30 minutes. And Batman is almost like a side character. Like, really, in essence, Batman is there just to move the plot along. Yeah. It's... It, it is funny too because as soon as it starts dying down batman shows up yeah <laughs> oh yeah this is about batman you gotta you kind of charge up a little bit yeah, but. you're like oh there's batman yeah okay cool you know but yeah it's just kind of like that like okay because it's like it when batman shows up in the first 30 minutes you get that a little excitement because it's like it's like i've been like i was watching supergirl and you know, these drones are attacking and Superman and Supergirl are, are racing around town trying to uh, stop them and, and save the innocent people. And, and Batman, I mean, um, Superman drops down right in front of this family and um, takes these bullets and then crushes the this drone. And the kid's like, wow, thanks, Superman. And he just smiles and winks and then takes off. And then dad looks up and then goes, all right, that's it. We're moving back to Gotham. And like <laughs> at that moment, you're kind of like, oh, shit, God, you know, it's that kind of little like. That little nugget where you're just kind of like, oh, cool. You know, they mentioned it. Cool. 
Yeah. You know, it, it's like that kind of thing when you because that's how how little Batman is shown in this that actually has him being Batman in any realm. Um, but the little he is shown, he's true Batman. Like he well, doesn't he's he's not acting stupid. He's not hamming it up for this lame fucking story he's <laughs> in. Like he's bat fucking man. Right. You know. And of course, Which, you know, sucks for Barbara Gordon, I guess. <laughs> right. And sucks for the people watching. Um, oh. <laughs> so once you get past that 30 minutes, then the movie becomes the movie. Um, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill, of course, come back for this. Uh, even the actors knew how big the story is for, you know, is for fans that, that, that they had to reteam. Like, I, it was one of those things where I was kind of like, and you know, I'm not as, as, as huge of a DC person as Adam is, but even I'm like, okay, if you're going to do this, you have to have Conroy and Hamill for this. There's just no other way. You have to have the best. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and it's no disrespect to that, that new guy that's been doing the Joker and a few things. Cause he is good. Right. I forget his name. He has a really simple name. That's why we forget it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you have to have the most iconic with the most iconic story. Yeah. Because hands down. Yeah, because even that, I mean, DC had to know that with fans, if they had Conroy and Hamill on the fucking box, you know, they were gonna go they were gonna go lose their shit over it, you know? So, you know, you had to get them back. And then when Hamill started tweeting about like Oh, they're doing the killing joke. I need to come back. For, you know, I need to come back for this. I need to do this. I need to do this. <laughs> you know, um, you know, and and, it, it, and even when they tweeted out that picture of both of them in front of a microphone, you're just kind of like, oh, this is happening. This is so awesome. Um, but what's what when you look at it, I mean, even with. The old, I mean, even though it was very true to the source material and all of that, the vo Mark Hamill's voice, because for those of you that may not have seen it, um, you're doing yourself a disservice, by the way. Um, it's the Joker's origin story in there as the comedian. Yeah. And the, not the 100 percent accepted one, but the one that most people pretty much go off of. Right. And with that it's kind of funny because like hamill's voice is it, it's very normal you know there's a little there's a little you know twinge of insecurity and uh, of of life kind of taking control of him instead of him controlling life you know his, his you know always feeling like he's a nobody you know always trying to get acceptance from his wife and, and Mark Hamill's voice really resonates with that. And then, you know, when it cuts back to the present time and you're hearing him do the whole speech of with, um, you know, where he buys that, um, where he buys the fucking, um, uh, not circus, but like the um, carnival. carnival. Yeah, where he buys the carnival and he gives that speech to, um, to Gordon about, you know, uh, about being... Uh, truthful to the law and all of that where he has him on trial it's so fucking amazing to hear his voice go back and forth that way and <coughs> here's the thing with the killing joke and it, and it is it's kind of corny to say that it's my favorite joker story because it's kind of everybody says that but the reason i believe it is is because every time the joker speaks in this story he's giving a monologue oh, there, yeah. there really is very little just back and forth nonsense and the the reason why the, the story always got to me is because if you really listen the joker makes sense oh yeah you know he's not he's saying something that is horrible and dark and like you you really would never go there but he's not lying it's the ugly he's just truth. giving you an it's the ugly truth it's the ugly truth of it he's he's telling you that you know you could just give up and be crazy right which is always an option, <laughs> you know, and it's, it kind of, it kind of, and then Batman comes in, Batman's that, that kind of grip of reality, you know, and, and it's, it's just, it's, it's a really, if you read the book and kind of read between the lines, it's a really powerful writing. 
Right. And and I love that they didn't change the lines. The the monologues are. Exa- I I actually pulled out the Killing Joke. Uh, when I was watching it the first time, because mm-hmm. I was sitting there like, you better not fuck this up. <laughs> and it's literally it's word for word. There was a couple where they might have added in an is or an a just to clean it up. Right. But it was just it was perfectly done. And it's just beautiful. And I mean, when you look at it character wise, I mean. And especially in regards to the Joker storyline, Batman and the Joker are very, very similar. Like they are almost identical, just with very different outcomes. You know, Bruce Wayne had a very bad day where he could have completely lost it. But what does he do? He ends up turning uh, to fight the violence that took away his parents. And you have the Joker whose, you know, wife and unborn son were uh uh, were killed and he just decided to lose it so it's that it, it it's really kind of interesting to look at that and see kind of how parallel they are to one another and the, yeah it's this in this story too it's it's plainly laid out for you yeah like they are on the opposite sides of the spectrum yeah. but in, very in reality, much the same in a lot of ways right and reality is kind of somewhere in the middle Right. Um, you know, cause you know, the Joker of course is trying to prove, uh, especially with, um, with Gordon that, you know, everybody always tries to pretend that the Joker is some kind of weird abnormality and he's just basically trying to prove to everyone, everybody can be just like me. They just have to have one bad day. Mm-hmm. Which is very true, because when you think about it, think about how easy it is that you could, if you just snapped, and then life would just become so much different after that. But, in that that's where people make the choice. And I think, in especially in this particular story, and I think what makes this story so good is, is especially, it's really pivots on Gordon. Like, even though he's kind of like a a secondary character, this whole story hinges on Gordon's decision to take the Joker by the book. Right. Because, you know... Which, was he going to do it the way he should, or was he just going to snap and try to kill him? Right. And then then just tell Batman to just... Because, you know, Batman would go either way. You know? Mm, I don't know. I mean... If he if he had the chance, he probably could kill the Joker. The Joker never wants to fully kill Batman because he'll you know bat to to him. He would have no purpose. Exactly, because the Joker basically thrives because of Batman. There's actually a comic run. Uh, it was really good too, where the Joker thought Batman died, and Batman was just healing up and hiding, but he thought he died, and the Joker slowly became sane. And started feeling remorse for all the things that he did, and they they were putting him on the uh, like the the TV shows and the news and stuff. And he was a normal normal guy; nothing r- was wrong with him. And then um, when Batman resurfaced, he twisted again, like yeah. he went right back to um, not give it a fuck, basically. Yeah, because because his his uh, I, I was his counterpoint was back. Because once you you know, it's basically like once you. Once you lose your your goal, you kind of waffle a bit, you know. And, yeah, and you're you're just kind of suspended in nothing. Like you don't know what to do with yourself anymore. Exactly, it's like basically like if you've ever worked for somebody, you got laid off, and you've been there for a long time. Suddenly, you have nowhere to go. What do you do? You know, and and that's kind of where the the Joker is, and and that's what I think most people get wrong about Batman and Joker is that. Both of them need each other, you know, the, and it, in, you know, obviously the Joker more so than Batman, but they need each other. And I think there is this, you know, like look that people think about just, oh, well, you know, the Joker could kill Batman if he wanted to. It's like, yeah, if he wanted to, he probably could. But why would That's he? the thing. That's the thing, too. A lot of people miss. Both of those characters are fully capable of killing the other one. Yeah. The Joker could set up a trap that kills Batman. Oh, yeah. He's smart enough. He knows how to do it. But he doesn't. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to kill him. Now, the only person that's killed Joker has been Superman in uh, Injustice. 
that was fucking crazy. And Batman had that look on his face like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I shit. I know. When you see, like, you know, and, uh, and for those of you that are not familiar with Injustice, um, the Joker sets a bomb that goes off in Metropolis that kills Lois Lane. And Batman, and in, in, in essence, the, the Joker proves his point. One, One bad, bad day. day. And, and Superman reached into his chest and pulled out his heart. Batman was next to him. And Batman had that look of like, oh, fuck. Like, and Joker and Joker died laughing. Too yeah, he died because laughing. Because he proved his point. That's all he wanted to do. Yeah. And that's his ultimate goal, which is, and if you look at it, that's why I think the Dark Knight of the Nolan series resonates so well. Because that is the Joker. Yeah. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong with the Tim Burton one. I mean, that, that, that Nicholson's Joker is great. But the, pr- the true ideology, in my opinion, of the Joker is the Dark Knight. But yeah, because the the whole one bad day thing is all he's about in the Dark Knight movie. Yeah, that's the whole point of what he's doing. Yeah, because you you have two boats. Remember, a one of um, one of civilians and one of prisoners, and in order for to save themselves, one has to blow up the other, and nobody does it. And then you he's know, always trying to prove that people are can be twisted like him. Yeah, very quickly. He fails at it most of the time, but <laughs> especially in the in that scene where he's like, "Oh, God, uh, yeah, he was something he just so frustrated, he, like God damn it, like he waited and then there's nothing. He's like, oh, if you want something done, you know, <laughs> he goes to try to, he's gonna blow it up himself.' <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean that that's really, you know, the basis of the story is you have, you know, the Joker needs Batman, but at the same time, this whole story hinges on Gordon because. You know, Batman will do anything that Gordon tells him to. You know, I mean, for the for the most part, and and what Gordon has experienced with all of this, and then seeing the pictures of of um, of Barbara and stuff like that, you know, he could have easily said, "Fucking kill him." I don't, you know, and then maybe Batman would have had to talk him down a little bit, but you know, I don't think Batman would have totally objected to why he feels a certain way. And there, there was something that kind of has been kind of going on with that whole story. By the way, that whole scene between Barbara and the Joker in the apartment was very chilling. Like, it, yeah, it, it was like, you know, the close up of the gun and the way the the camera pulls back and you see it's, it's like it. The, they move the camera in such a way that it captured each panel of that whole scene before he shoots her. It's 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 literally panel for panel from the book. Yeah. Like even the transitions and there if you notice when when the Joker is moving, he's either moving very slowly or very slightly. Yeah. It's almost like all the movement is very slight on purpose. Right. Because every time the movement happens and they stop, that's a panel from the book. Yeah. You know, and it was done so beautifully. Like I was like, Oh my god, like this is so fucking perfect. And you it, know, obviously a tragic scene, but I right. mean it it was just so good. But the, and the thing is, is that there has been some conjecture about the whole, you know, Joker and Barbara thing and the, the pictures and stuff like that, that I don't particularly buy that the Joker raped Barbara. No, people. I have, don't either. People. He wa- I feel he wanted to make it look like he just wanted to make her look horrible because those pictures were for Gordon. Right. And then to, to twist him up. And, and, you know, and while, you know, we know the Joker has been known to be around women. It doesn't seem that that motive would have been a ple- that wouldn't would have given him pleasure, because we know he wanted to he wanted to really fuck with Gordon, but that doesn't mean he wouldn't have had somebody else rape her while he takes yeah, the pictures. Yeah, he could have. You know, I could believe the Joker doing that, yeah. like having one of his goons do it, or you know, just to demean her even more. Right. But um, I don't see him doing it. There'd be no purpose for it for him. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't. I, I've honestly thought for a long time that the Joker is asexual. He never shows any kind of feeling, unless it's an off the shoot book written by someone kind of weird. But he <laughs> never shows any kind of sexual interest. Yeah, to except for except for uh, Harley. But even that, it's more. Uh, even that, it's not like a physical thing. Yeah, but Harley is more physical than he is. Harley is, is fucking wants to screw all the time. You can tell that. But that but, that would be the dynamic. And she might, he, that might be the yeah. dynamic though. He's more like reserved he might, uh, in that area than she is. 
they somebody said a quote about those two that I thought was perfect. That um every oh yeah, everyone's seen the Joker laugh, but only Harley has seen the Joker cry. Mm. You know, and I think I think that quote alone kind of explains their relationship. Like, obviously, their relationship sucks. Right. Um, <laughs> in current in current runs, they don't have they they're not together. Yeah. But um, Mr. it's always J. been he he feels emotion through her. Yeah, rejects it nine out of ten times. But she's the one that kind of keeps him as grounded as the Joker can be. Yeah, you know. But it's it's a really odd thing to kind of see, and it's it's so like layered and, and like i honestly i don't know i think that's why i think the joker is the best villain out of all comic books not just because he's super popular or whatever you know but because he just is like very complex yeah i mean it's not a straightforward character it's not a bane you know it's or not two face or, or and those are those are great yeah those are great villains but they they're they got one note right. you know what i mean they, they're not doing crazy shit or they're not surprising you Right, and that's the thing with the, the especially the villains that that stand the test of time, like the Joker, that has come a long way. What seventy five years of the Joker? Um, yeah, you know, for a character to last a long, aside from people just liking to bring a, a certain villain back, the Joker is around because of the fact that he is so layered, and because no one truly knows the origin story of the Joker, which is great, which is fine. I'm happy with that, you know. It allows people this this, or allows writers and creators to just kind of have a different a different aspect or a different slant on him that still will allow them to just kind of do whatever. And at the same time, you're kind of like, yeah, that's the fucking Joker right there, you know. But uh, you know, with with everything where they, you know, where they. Uh, um, I mean, because to be honest, I mean, yeah, the, the Killing Joke is relatively short. I mean, it's it's not a very long, arduous read, and the movie itself is a lot more streamlined. Uh, it's just Batman trying to find where the Joker is. And then, of course, the whole, swear to me, line just had me rolling. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I haven't seen him, I swear to God. Swear to and me. Then <laughs> another, right. Another thing, too, at the book, the book purposely leaves it open with the pan down and they and they and they do it in the movie but it's also in the book too where after the joker tells his joke at right. the end they're laughing both of them and then it pans down and a lot of people are going well did he kill him did he not kill him like you don't because, know because it goes from two well at least as because uh, they move in on each other a little bit they move in on each other but down. you have two sets of laughter going on and then when the can when it pans down towards the water there's only one set only one laughter and they kind of did the same thing in the movie to kind of illustrate of you know and some people have said you know batman is the you know most people have interpreted that batman's the only one laughing at the end because he finally kills the joker i don't see that because then that kind of proves the joker's point yeah i don't think any i don't think anyone died to be honest, I've never thought that. It's it's just it's interesting how they played it to get people to talk about it. Yeah. But it wouldn't make any sense for either of their narratives for either of them to die. It was just an easy oh my god what happened to do at the end of the book because of the first conversation that Batman had in Arkham with what he thought was the Joker. Right. Where he says that one of us is going to kill kill the other one. It's right. going to happen. Yeah. You know. But also too I, I like that moment because the Joker is very, um, very human in that part. Yeah, like he just tells a joke. He's yeah. not. He's not crazy in in that moment. Because I, I think it's it's that point. Because at that particular moment, I've always felt that the Joker kind of apexed. You know, like yeah. he he had, he did what he had set out, or he tr attempted to set out what he was going to tr um, to try to do, and it didn't work. Batman didn't kill him. Uh, Gordon still remains sane. And it's almost like it humbled him for a minute. Yeah, like maybe this is just me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, maybe I'm the only one that thinks this. <laughs> maybe yeah. I'm. Yeah, maybe I'm the only fucked up one here. I don't know. Let's. <laughs> no, obviously, I'm maybe sure, it's just me. <laughs> you know, I don't I'm know. I'm sure shortly after that he slips right back into being a lunatic. But oh, it, yeah. it it was it was a brief moment. 
And a few of these moments with the Joker have happened over his long history where he just – it's almost like his eyes were open to other possibilities. Yeah. And then, but he quickly will shut them and go oh, yeah. back into what, it, what he usually does. And, and that's the thing is, like, I, I, I always seem to see those particular moments always with Batman. Yes. Because it's like, I, I think, you know, and, and, you know, this kind of goes back to our earlier point of them needing each other, is that I, I, in my opinion, I always see that the Joker believes and knows that Batman is the only one that can relate to him. Regardless of yeah. how fucking psychotic the Joker is. And to be honest, if you think about it, it's twisted to even say the closest thing the Joker has to a friend is Batman. Right. And I'm not including Harley because Harley wasn't around when this book was written. Right. So that really the only one who knows him as as well as you can know him is is Batman. Yeah. You know, and it's 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 this twisted um, relationship that they have, and to the Joker, they he probably considers Batman his friend. Yeah, a, ba- a you know, friend Batman that he would like him. to beat the shit out of. Right, but, you, you know, know he, but and he said it. He's I remember in the um, the uh, death of the family run, Joker was saying, "I love you a lot," and he was you know saying that we're we're made to be together, like that oh, kind of shit. Yeah, you know, much later after the Killing Joke, of course, but it, it's just that kind of like psychosis that's going on <laughs> yeah. it's just so fucking intriguing it's a very unhealthy you know? relationship yeah <laughs> beats up batman just as much as he beats up harley yeah and you then, know so it's it's crazy and man. the batman and batman is a, the batman and batman has been the only one that says he knows the joker you know when it's like going up no, no this isn't the joker like he knows the joker and and as much as batman would not be willing to admit you know, the Joker is what keeps him going. So it's it's always kind of interesting to see that di- th- that dynamic play out, and the moments of clarity, even with Batman, is with the Joker. Because I think deep down, both of them know that they both came from very similar backgrounds. Just one chose to f- go and say, you know, what is it? Uh, some people just want to watch the world burn, and the other ones want to try to put the fire out. So, I don't know. It's just kind of it's kind of weird that uh, it's kind of weird, but at the same time, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And and so for those people that are like, oh, the Joker's just a crazy. Those people don't understand the character. Yeah, they, the Joker isn't just crazy. Yeah, I mean he's like, crazy. He's the fucking crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like even some even a, a lot a... of those mob bosses. You know, you got the guys that don't have a fucking second thought about killing a family or killing kids and stuff like that. They're afraid of the fucking Joker. Yeah. It's not just the good guys that are, that fear Joker. Like there there's been many occasions where other in in the in the cartoon and the comics whatever where the other villains are speaking with each other cuz they're they're like they're all like mob bosses to it to an extent. They have their territories, they have sit downs, you know, to hash right. things out. When the Joker shows up, everyone tenses. Yeah. Because the Joker has no territory, and he doesn't respect anyone's territory. He right. does whatever the fuck he wants. Well, it's kind of like like I think the perfect in in a in a in the film universe, um, I think the Jack Nicholson scene where he talks to all the mob bosses, you know, where he fries that one dude at the table, yeah. you know, that kind of I think encapsulates that where he's kind of like you know all these people are looking at him like what the fuck and then he just kind of roasts that one guy and they're like you know you're crazy kind of thing and i think ledger kind of does that with the when he meets up the mob with that one uh boss and he lights that yeah. pile of money on fire and that seems good too because if you really pay attention most of the people at the and the ledger scene most of the people at the table are scared and then you have the russian and you have fucking black dynamite over there so <laughs> Those two are – you have the whole spectrum there. Mm-hmm. You have every choice you can have if you're speaking to the Joker. You can be terrified, which is what most people do. You could try to work with him or you can go against him. Right. Going against him ain't going to fucking work. Terrify, you'll probably be okay. And going with him, it ain't going to work either. Yeah. You especially, know, so it's Especially it's kind when he of, takes the skull of somebody and slams it onto a pencil, you know? 
That was so cool. <laughs> that was fucking. I remember it's, watching ah. that in the movie and just like, and then seeing him do that like right out the gate, and everybody was like, "Oh my god!" Like that. It was funny when I happened. when I saw it in the theater. It it was one of those scenes where the oh shit from the audience was delayed. Yeah. Like because no it, one expected it. No one know? expected, it. and it took a second because I remember seeing it too, and then seeing that, and, the, and then like that second delay of like, oh my god, what the fuck just happened? You know. And, and, and they didn't have to get gory about it or right. anything like that. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it, but yeah, it's it, it is definitely the the Joker is the epitome of of evil in a lot of ways. But then in a lot of ways, he's other things. Like he's so many different fucking things. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. and if you talk to if you talk to hardcore Joker fans. And you'll see a lot of you talk with DC fans. You'll catch one or two or whatever. Myself included. <laughs> they all have different viewpoints on that one character. Oh yeah. Now, if you talk to a bunch of people about um, another villain, let's let's say fucking let's keep with Two Face. Everyone's gonna have pretty much the same outlook right. on Two Face, unless there's someone reading way too fucking into it. <laughs> you know, but but I could talk to I've done this. I'll tell it's like, oh, Joker's my favorite favorite villain. Oh yeah, me too. And we'll talk, and it's completely different. Two different characters that we're talking about. Well, yeah. But we're talking about the same books. <laughs> exactly. Now, keep in mind, when you talk to a Joker fan, make sure they're talking about the books, not the movie. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, I mean, hey, I don't knock people for being fans only from the movie. Like, enjoy what you want to enjoy. But don't come at me <laughs> when you've only seen Heath Ledger and try to tell me what's what. Because right. I'm going to check you. Like I had, oh my god, this has nothing to do with Joker, but it's definitely the point that I'm trying to make. There's a guy at my work, and I overheard him. He sits pretty close to me, and he's explaining to uh, somebody about Batman versus Superman, the cyborg scene, with the little <laughs> cut. Right. And he's like, yeah, so you know that box that absorbed into him? And the guy's like, yeah, what was that? And he goes, that's actually an infinity stone. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm oh listening to god. him. Oh my god. I'm listening to him. He goes, yeah, they're just doing... He goes, because the DC movies haven't been doing so well, they're just setting up for a big crossover event. What and I go, fuck? I go, bro, I'm sorry. Like, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you are 100% incorrect. <laughs> like, you couldn't be more incorrect. <laughs> I said, I don't know who's feeding you false information. He goes, well, what was it? It was obviously an Infinity Stone. I said, first of all, an Infinity Stone doesn't look like a box. <laughs> there are boxes that hold Infinity Stones. But an infinity stone is a stone. Right. And it glows. I said, that was a mother box. And he goes, what's a mother box? And I go, oh, my God. I'm like, look, bro, I need you to go home and I need you to look up mother box DC comic. <laughs> and I need you, like, and he goes, you seem really upset. And I'm like, I'm not upset. Yeah. I'm just upset. <laughs> <laughs> so he came back the next day and he's like, you know what? You're completely right. He says, my, my boy was telling me that it was, you know, and I don't know. I'm just really digging the movies. But I don't really know much about comics and stuff, you know. And yeah, you're you're 100 percent right, mother box and all. Like, oh, I know I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't come at me with that. I just couldn't let that injustice stand. Right. That was like this is ridiculous. He's Suddenly, like, an, Amer Infinity an American flag comes down from behind you, and a bald eagle lands on your fucking <laughs> yeah, shoulder. Right. Hey, <laughs> the United States of America only has two original art forms: jazz and comic comics. books. Don't fuck up one of them. <laughs> We only got two. <laughs> Let us have them. <laughs> Motherfucker. And every every other country respects us for it. I don't need somebody from our own country that misinformed. Right. Dick. In, the, in, the, in, in the information age, we should not be this ill-informed. Well, what pissed me off, too, is like he was making it sound like oh marvel had to throw dc a bone <laughs> and i'm like oh no motherfucker that ain't gonna work with me and i told him i said look i'll admit the marvel movies um make more sense and they've made way more money and i'm not gonna argue that point with you i could bring up a couple of things but i'm not going to but in the realm of comic books they're evenly matched Sometimes one's doing better. Sometimes the other one's doing better. But depends on what they got going on. <laughs> exactly. Traditionally, they they both have great writers and great art staff, and that's it. And all so of them cross over you. back and forth. So, yeah, and I'm not gonna have somebody telling everybody <laughs> that we need to put Infinity Stones in DC Comics because DC Comics suck. <laughs> Fuck you. And I'm not gonna have you 
go around <laughs> spreading this kind Telling of shit. Telling people these fucking propaganda <laughs> lies. This is what Trump's America will bring us. Folks. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh my god. But we're cool now. I actually, he actually keeps coming to me and asking me questions because, and then that's what that's the point I'm trying to make. Like, we see people that are becoming fans of these comic book characters just through the movie. They're just coming in, right? And they're interested. They're not going to continue being interested if you're like, you're a fucking asshole because you only like the movies. Like, explain some shit to them, you know? Show them some comics. Tell them what to read. Comic books are confusing. When you, when you come at it, you've never come at it because you have no idea where you're at, you know? So, like, I always try to be like, oh, you know what? If you, if you dig in that character from the movie, read this run, read this run, you know, this is pretty dope, blah, 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 blah. Um, but then you have um, people that <laughs> then you have people that go, well, I know everything because I saw the Avengers. No, <laughs> you don't know shit. <sighs> Young basically, Padawan. Basically, what we're trying to say is educate. Basically, step your fucking game up. That's <laughs> what I'm trying. To say. Well, I had somebody educate. Tell me they don't like, discriminate. They were like uh, when the Green Lantern movie came out. I think we had this conversation a long time ago. It was like. Oh, Green Lantern's a horrible character, and I'm like, what? Oh, Green Lantern's dope, you know? It's the cool. It's like the, sucked. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but, and the, no, that's what they said. They go, what are you talking about? He's cool. Did you see the movie? And I'm like, <laughs> well, yeah, the movie sucked, but Green Lantern is cool. And he's like, nah, man, I saw that movie, and I'm like, you do know, <laughs> Green Lantern's been around for a long time in comic books, right? And he's like, well, comic books don't matter. We're talking about a movie. I'm like, I'm going to punch you in your fucking teeth. <laughs> I was so angry. Oh, Got to defend the art form, man. America. Exactly. Exactly. I, it's communist talk to say comic books suck. <laughs> That's some Nazi communist <laughs> ISIS shit to say. Oh, man. <laughs> I, was like, well, I was listening to, uh, oh, last podcast on the left, and I was listening. That's a... Uh, it's a true crime podcast, and they were talking about um, they were talking about H.H. Uh, H. Holmes, this this uh, like nineteenth century uh, serial killer that was around the around around the same time as Jack the Ripper, and they said that uh, there was this one particular person who, you know, they go might have been a Nazi, and they're like, I'm not sure. He probably seemed a little too aggressive for the Nazis. Yeah, even the Nazis are like, oh no, we we don't need you. <laughs> We don't need you as part of this. Even even the Nazis, when you would say comic book sucks, even the Nazis would be like, "Oh no no no, that's oh. no <laughs> nine 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 nine. Oh man! All right. Well, no, the oh. Nazis might have thought <laughs> Nazis might have hated comic books because at the time Captain America was punching <laughs> Hitler in the face, motherfucker. Yeah, and they were probably digging it. I'm just saying, you they know, probably not, were. Not everybody was uh, drinking the Kool Aid over there. You last know? thing, last thing I'll say about comic books because it is Joker related. There was a run where Joker and Red Skull. It was a crossover event where Joker and Red Skull teamed up, and um, Captain America and Batman teamed up, mm-hmm. and um, everything was fine. They were all working together. Once Joker realized um, Red Skull was a Nazi, he punched him in the face and said, <laughs> "I might be, a, I might be crazy." He said, I might be a psychopathic killer, but I'm an American psychopathic killer. <laughs> I was like, mm. <laughs> everyone hates Nazis, even the Joker. Joker. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So this brings us to the uh, portion of the show where we just give kind of our final thoughts of on the um, on the movie. Even though we pretty much 80% <laughs> of this was talking about the actual book. Right. Yeah. But, you know, that's okay. <laughs> it works. Which is kind of, you know, that last portion of the film anyway. So, uh, my final thoughts on this one is, if you discount the initial first act of this film, it is a perfect Batman adaptation. However, uh, that first act kind of lingers in the film and fully discounts Batman's motives to capture the Joker as as uh, one of revenge rather than simply doing the right thing. I have to agree with that, especially for someone who doesn't know the history, doesn't know the books. Right. Um, that that first that first story is going to leave a bad taste in their mouth, and you're going to think, "Oh, he's going to avenge his little girlfriend or yeah. something like that." Yeah. Um, however, I don't think that. So <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you, but just not. I mean, I know you didn't feel that way either because you you know what's going on. Right. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm just I just felt it kind of cheapened the story a it little did. bit. That, it, it, and, it. and from and from a fan of that particular graphic novel, that's why I kind of, I kind of felt right. that I, I felt that way about it. 
And I pretty much said the same thing. Ignore the horrible beginning, and it's a faithful, almost panel-to-panel video rendition of a classic story. Um, if you if you like if you've read The Killing Joke and you like it in any sort of way, you have to watch this. Yeah. Like skip the fucking Barbara Gordon one if you want, but you <laughs> have to watch this. It's Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill. I mean, it's classic shit. Yeah. Can't get it was better than so that. fucking good. I remember the first time I was watching it. And I was angry because I'm I I'm watching I'm used to DC animation being the shit because right. it usually is you know right and I'm watching I'm like God this fucking sucks like what am I watching fucking a, a Marvel movie eh? I'm, just uh. <laughs> I'm just playing I'm just playing um and then once that once I once I saw Batman show up to Arkham Asylum I immediately forgot what I had just watched yeah exactly that's how hyped I was yeah. You know, so I agree too because I remember watching like I remember watching it in the first half hour. I was like, "What the fuck am I watching here? Like, what is this? This has nothing to do with what I was watching or what I what I was prepared to watch." It's almost false advertisement. I'm about yeah. to call somebody. <laughs> Killing joke, my ass. I'm like killing stroke. This is like the oh. porn rendition. Well, I had to double check. Like, this isn't the porn parody, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so. We want to hear you. You can comment on all our social media havens. Go ahead and tell us your thoughts, requests. Just say hi on our Facebook page, Google+, Instagram, Twitter, and even Snapchat. Uh, if you uh, we're st- are still our t- 2017 slate for uh, the cheap seats is open. Like We haven't even had a discussion as to what we're going to do after the Star Wars um, holiday special. So if you have recommendations, you'd like to know our thoughts on some, on some uh, particular movies, uh, let us know. Drop us a line. I know I've actually got one, re- uh, one, th- I guess request, um, uh, which came to our uh, came to our email. Uh, so uh, the geeks. Is that my man Amador? No, actually, it was uh, Jessica. But uh, Amador needs to Amador needs to get us that fucking um, that fucking uh, Indian uh, movie that superhero kind of movie that he showed us that trailer for that's what, what he needs to, that, that he needs to get on that but uh but uh yeah so what did what did, what did jessica jones suggest <laughs> i'll tell you off camera i'll tell you offline um oh okay <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh because i don't want to say it on here because then people might say oh yeah you should do that if there's no way to view it you know that kind of thing oh it's one of those it might be one oh. of those um so uh yeah so uh drop us a line and uh let us know your thoughts your uh your requests and then uh we'll we'll start pulling some um but off off of this stuff you can find me on the interwebs on uh twitter at a middle-aged geek instagram middle-aged underscore geek or check out my blog the middleagegeek.com I started, <laughs> I was reading through, you know, what's so sad is you think I'm doing something stupid. I'm reading through our show notes like we just did. Um, you know where I'm at. I'm on Twitter at Sapien TLG. All right. So next month's movie, as we said earlier, Transformers, the movie, the 1986 animated movie, not that fucking uh, Michael Bay shit. I haven't seen this joint either. Yeah. So this will be interesting. And because uh, when he first said the Transformers, the movie, I'm like, that Michael Bay movie? <laughs> I was like, why are we doing that? <laughs> no, nah, we're going to be watching that, uh, the animated movie, which uh, which came out, uh, what, about a month ago? Last month? Yeah, because it came out the same day Civil War came out. They did the 30th anniversary of the Transformers of the, I of the movie. I was two years old when this came out. <laughs> I saw this in theaters with some friends, and we were at the end of it, we were like, Oh my God! What the fuck just happened? <laughs> it's like—is my face melted off? It feels like it's melted off. Seriously, I mean, you know, if you if you put in the in the retrospect, and you probably will see if you guys haven't seen this, or if you just look at some stuff online, you're gonna see a lot of people talking about this like this fucked up some childhoods, like because you you know you remember the, the the classic Transformers animated series, which was just like. You know, stop the Decepticons, you know, blah, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. And then you see the movie and you're just like, what the fuck just happened? So, but we'll get into that all next month. So uh, that is it for this episode of The Cheap Seats. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. Shut up. The trailers are on.
This has been a production of the Lazy Geeks Network, available only at thelazygeeks.com. Goodbye.